The Cavs lost again in embarrassing fashion. Why this loss, on top of all the other ones, tells us everything we need to know about the Cavs. That's coming up today on Locked on Cavs. You are Locked on Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. Welcome in. I'm Chris Manning here solo today with you. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com backslash lockdown NBA and use code all lowercase lockdown NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. So here's what I will say to start. I hope you did not watch the Cavs game on Sunday. Genuinely. I hope that you watched the game that was in Cleveland. Maybe if you live here, you're lucky enough to go. Maybe you watched it on TV. You wanted to be part of a big moment. But Iowa-South Carolina was just a better use of your time. I had both games on uh, because it's my job currently, um, side job to cover this team and talk about this team with an informed opinion. Objectively, Iowa, South Carolina was a better use of your Sunday afternoon if you were going to watch one thing. If you're going to want to pick one basketball game. The Iowa game is better. For the Cleveland Cavaliers to score 80 points in the first half, to then score 38 in the second, to lose the way they did, to get stuffed at the end for Darius Garland, if you're the, the Max Drew shot, And just the collapse you could see coming a mile away. For that all to just be there. For that all to just be staring in your face. And part of what was happening. And seemingly inevitable. It's embarrassing. The Cavs collapsed. The Cavs were, again, their own worst enemy. They were the worst version of themselves. There is not... Really anything I think you can say positive coming out of that loss to the Clippers. For the Cleveland Cavaliers to play the way they did, to lose the way they did, tells you everything you need to know about them. This team is on the road to nowhere. This team is on the road to the end of some era. I don't know how this roster or this coaching staff or anything comes back in shape next year. You're losing inexplicable, bizarre games over and over and over again. You have not had a normal stretch of the season since the All-Star break. This isn't just like a couple weeks of crap, right? This isn't just like you had March 6th to the 18th and you had some injuries and you were in a funk and you lost to Brooklyn in that stretch and whatever. It's like we got like almost six, seven weeks of garbage, that this team hasn't been good, that nothing on this team works, that nothing on this team feels right. Like, on another day, I would have come to you on the show, maybe Evan's here, maybe we get a guest, whatever. I would have looked at this and said, hey, Darius Garland, huh? 28 and 8, five steals, you know, five turnovers, but he had to play with the ball in his hands a ton. Took eight threes out of his 22 shots. There's something there, right? Like, he's turning the corner. Evan Mobley came out hot, looked aggressive, took two threes, didn't make any, but took two threes, four or six from the line. Well-rounded game. Jared Allen had a 17-10 and game, right? Could have been like, okay, those guys stepped up. They did what they needed to do. Great. You got to win against the Clippers who didn't have Kawhi, who didn't have Mitchell, so star power evens out, whatever. It's like, no, you scored then scored 38 points in the second half. You can't even lose normally anymore if you're the Cavaliers. That That's what this feels like. This feels like a team that has just completely lost its way, that has completely lost its path, that has completely lost any semblance of an identity. Where that leaves you a week out from the playoffs is nowhere good. Where this leaves you right before the playoffs 
is in a really tough space. It leaves you feeling like they're probably going to lose in the first round. And I, I, we'll, we'll get into some of the standing stuff in segment two. I, I do want to kind of hit on where that stands and, and look at it with, with some objectivity. The Donovan Mitchell part of this and him not playing, I don't want to get into his future. That's not like a conversation for now. I, I don't think that's fun for anyone to listen to. It's not fun for me to talk about. Him not playing means less right now than it did a month ago. That's just a fact to me. He is not the same guy. The other team didn't have Kawhi Leonard. If you are a team that has other good players that can score 80 points and a half, lead by 26 at one point in the second half, right? Lead for 22 minutes and 44 seconds of the second half. I don't care if you don't have Donovan Mitchell. You're, you should just win that game. If you're a normal, functioning NBA franchise, you should win that game. I don't care if you have Donovan Mitchell or not. You should just be... The first half you played, you should win that game. And instead you collapsed and it was predictable. And that tells us something about this. I also think there's some really confounding lineup stuff in this game. I, I don't know how Sam Merrill, who I... I understand JB's philosophy to a large degree. I think what he he's defensive first, all that stuff. At a certain point, you couldn't buy a bucket. You started running out of gas. Carousel Vert's giving you nothing. 0-6 field in the second half. 0-4 from three. Why not just try Sam Merrill for five minutes to get some shots up to loosen up the defense? Instead, you just stick with Garland and Struess and Levert and Allen and Mobley playing the biggest chunk of minutes. Okoro up next in terms of minutes, and then like spot minutes for Marcus Morris and Jordan Yang. You can't like just read the room and be like, we just need some spacing. I don't understand that. I don't understand the mentality. I don't understand just the way this team functions in any real way right now. This team is so down bad. This team is so lost, and this loss tells you that. you, If you are, again, a normal, functioning NBA franchise, you do not score 80 points in the half and lose against a team that doesn't have its best player. I don't care if you don't have your best player. I don't. You play that way you did in the first half against a team down its best player. You should win, and instead you didn't. That tells us something. All right, up next, what this loss means standing-wise, where we are headed. That's coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, and college football entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. If you want to play long, side some, some of Prize Picks' favorite players like Amik Mill and Sugar Sean O'Malley, you can now find community plays under the Promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Prize Picks also offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. So for basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return for the second, Price Picks will have your back and not count that as a loss. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. I just want to repeat that offer for you. you download the app, use our code LOCKEDONNBA, and you get a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, moving along here. Train keeps rolling here on Locked on Cavs. So funny thing, playoff standings, huh? How these work. Not that long ago, when the Cavs were a good basketball team, a functioning basketball team, they were in good position to be the second seed. 
in a really good spot to make a run to have home court advantage in the first round, to be on the opposite of Boston, to have home court advantage in a possible Bucks or Knicks series in round two. You felt good about that, right? Even that that long ago, if you looked at the models, playoffstatus.com being the one I, I use primarily, it would tell you, okay, pretty good chance of being the, the two seed, maybe more likely the three seed, whatever. As of today, and because of the slide they've been on, the Cavs are now the five seed. They are two and a half games back of the Bucks with three games to play. So they are not going to get the two seed would be my guess. Unless they win all three, something implodes, whatever. It's going to be hard for them to do that. They are half a game behind the Knicks, who are the four seed. And they are half a game behind the Magic, who are the three seed. The sad part, if you're Cleveland, is that none of these teams feel like should feel like they're playing good right now because they're not. To me, and I just talked about this with, with my guy Brennan Clean over on our other show, the Just Basketball Show. Check that out. The team you should feel second best about in the East right now is not the Bucks, the Cavs, the Magic, the Knicks, it, the Heat, the Pacers. It's the 76ers because they got Joel Embiid back and are functioning and have won five in a row and look normal and good and the offense is functioning. Tells you something. There's an opportunity here in the East. Maybe none of these teams have a, sh- a snowball's chance in hell against the Boston Celtics. I wouldn't pick the Cavs against them. You know, if they got in a series, that would have been like a six-game series at most to me. But you could have like made the Eastern Conference Finals, and maybe that helps you keep Donovan Mitchell. I hate that I said that. I know it's gross. I know I said I wasn't going to do it. Talk about his future. Kind of just felt right in that moment. Now, as you are the five seed, and maybe you won't end up as the five seed, maybe you end up as the four seed, maybe you end up as the three seed. For what it's worth, playoffstatus.com, that model, Cavs, two seed, 21% chance, three seed, 29% chance, four seed, 22% chance, 16% chance of being the five seed. You look at that, a lot up in the air going into the last week of the season, a lot going up there and who you could play. You're a week out from the playoffs starting. Well, like, you know, two weeks. No idea if they're going to get Indiana or the Sixers or the Knicks again or the Magic or whomever. You have no idea who you're getting. You have no... It doesn't feel like you have any control over who you're going to get or what your seed is going to be, right? You end up feeling like you're in this position where everything is out of sorts. Everything does not make sense to you. Nothing is lined up for you because you have played the way you did you have ended up acting like the team that you are. This is this is what being the Cavs cost you. I understand there's parts of this that are bad luck for them. Mitchell being hurt. Mobley being hurt this year. Garland's just absolutely seasoned from, from hell. All of that, right? All of that is functionally just bad luck and part of a season that makes it feel this way. But at a certain point, it's like on you. It is your responsibility to be and reflect what you are. It is not just about like what happens to you. It is about what you do about it, how you face that, how you react to it, what your attitude is, how you just handle this. This is true about NBA teams. This is true about me. This is true about you. This is true about your mom. This is true about Evan, Jake, whomever, right? Personal accountability and a team's accountability and like what they how they react to adversity tells you something about them. It tells you something about a person. The Cavs in the face of adversity since the All-Star break have just completely looked, quote, to paraphrase Jared Allen, like the, the lights are too bright. Like the moment was too big for them. That is what that has felt like the last six weeks. That is how you end up here with a week to go in the regular before the season ends. And you are in the wilderness. You are lost. That is what that costs you. A loss like this against the Clippers, on top of all the other losses you've had, the Heat, losing to the Hornets. I mean, like, you lost to the Hornets. I want to just remind you for a second, just quickly. Hornets in that game. Brandon Miller, rookie, 31, okay. They played uh, Thunder cast off. Micic, Nick Richards, Miles Bridges. 
Latvian Laser played in that game for them. Like Grant Williams is just there. Poku played 23 minutes for that team. That's not like a real NBA team. They have a coach who's announced he's stepping down. Like that is about as inept as a team you are going to play an entire season. You could look at the numbers. You could look at the wins. You just watch them play, and it's like, oh my god, like what is going on here? And you lost to them. When you lose games like that, and you also lose games like you did against the Clippers, you end up here. You end up as a team that doesn't feel like they have any control over their playoff seating, that doesn't feel like they have any control over what they are. This is what happens when you are this lost in the wilderness. I don't know what to... There, there's no way to spin this positively. You look at the numbers, and it paints it even like... Absolutely, it paints it even weirder story, right? The Cavs' defense has just absolutely fallen off a of- And that has... That has had everything to do with this. The defense over the last two weeks, according to Clean the Glass, is 27th in the league. Okay? Here are the, the teams with a worse defense over the last couple weeks than the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Toronto Raptors, the Charlotte Hornets, and the Utah Jazz. That is just really good company for you. If you're a team that wants to, to, to maximize this season, wants to have eyes on being the two seed, wants to just like be a normal NBA team, like, and you're not like the Thunder, where it's like, okay, like you're having a weird run, but like you're kind of, you're young, but you've had a great season overall. It's just like, okay, like they're probably going to be fine. The Cavs haven't earned that benefit of the doubt. And all these other teams, for the most part, in this run are bad, right? Or at least aren't like crapping the bed quite as much as the Cavs. Like the Knicks are down here in terms of net rating and in defense. They at least like, have their offense is booming the last two weeks and and have a good point differential. So like they're they're functioning. The Pacers offense the last two weeks blistering. They're still functioning. The the Thunder like they are four and five. Like they, they're not great, but they're functioning. The Clippers are six and three, and the offense is good. They are more than functioning. The Cavs are seventeenth in offense. They have a defense that is twenty seventh and seven points worse per hundred possessions thereabouts than the league average. Fallen off a cliff, a cliff from their fourth best even to league. It is eight points worse about their 7.4, 7 7.4 to be exact, or 7.6, excuse me, worse than their, than their defense on the year. Let me repeat that. The Cavs' defense on the year is eight points better than their average over the last two weeks. The defense has just been awful. This is a team built on defense. This is a team built on toughness, and they've talked about culture and all this stuff. Where is any of that right now? So you do all that, you get some wins, and things implode. You get some lot, you rack up losses. Excuse me, it is late. I am sorry. I'm a little annoyed. Where does that get you? You end up in the spot where your season's out of control, and you're probably going to lose in the first round, and that's what it feels like. And you, you're any chance you had of getting a good seed. You lost that opportunity. It is your fault that it didn't open this way. That That is what this Cavs run. This is what losses like that do. All right, coming up next. What is there to play for in the last week? Try to answer that. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why I have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdownmba. That is linkedin.com slash lockdownmba to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, we'll end it here. Last week of the regular season is here, thankfully. 
I think, for everyone. So, Cavs have games against the Grizzlies, the Pacers, and the Hornets. It is as simple as this to me. If this team wants to salvage the season, if this team wants to have any shot of salvaging the season, they can't even salvage the season at this point, I, th- I think, and or based on this, just this one week. It is going to be about, you have to kind of win all three games. I think you have to look at these games as must win. You have two days off to, to get healthy, get back on the into your right time zone, into the Midwest. You play a Grizzlies team that is bad. I mean, on the year, they are bottom five in point differential. They are banged up to all heck. They Over the last two weeks, they have the fifth best, fifth worst offense and the third worst defense. The team sucks. You got to beat them. Remember the Charlotte Hornets, a, a team that I, I sh- said the Cavs should have beat? Well, Cavs played them again last of the regular season. 30th in point differential in the year. Nearly a point worse than the, the second worst team. The offense for them is okay the last couple weeks, but the defense remains putrid. Just beat them. That'd be good. That's fan appreciation day. Maybe, like, don't lose to the Hornets that day. Just a thought. And you get the Pacers on Friday, which that's that's another playoff caliber team. A team that has different pieces of team you could see in round one. But let's use that as a barometer. Uh, and just see what any of that looks like. You have all three games to end the year at home. So you get a chance to just be in your environment, defend your home court, and get something out of it. And it's now or never. For, I think, a bunch of different fronts, what this team is going to look like in six months, who has jobs, who, who whatever. That is all seemingly on the line here. And that's I, that has started a while ago. But you're at home this week. Your seating's on the line. I know you're hurt. I know you're banged up. I know this team is frustrated. I can't imagine the locker room and the flight home from LA is the most comforting, normal place. I'm sure they're not cheery oath. I'm sure they didn't have a group, let's watch WrestleMania and Jared Allen's laptop flying home party. I'm sure that wasn't what they did, or, or if they did, I'm sure that wasn't the most, you know, chip, chip, cheerio kind of vibe going on there. You have three games this week, all winnable. If you want this season to have any chance of working out in your favor, I think you just got to win all three. But why, based on what we have seen in the last six weeks, would you think this week would go that way? There is nothing in the Cavs' track record since the All-Star break that tells you that they're capable of just having a normal week of basketball. I don't think they're capable of it anymore. I don't think you can just assume it's going to get right. I don't know what Donovan Mitchell is going to look like. I don't know what any of this is going to look like anymore. I don't think anyone does. This team doesn't have an identity. This team has been weird for weeks. Nothing has really worked how it should or it feels like it should for weeks. So where is this team going? What is going to happen? I don't know. I don't know what seed they're going to get. All I really feel confident right now is that nothing feels like it is working. And when you're there, you can kind of predict where this is all going to end. I'm Chris Manning. Evan will be back the next two days with you. I'm, I'm off for a work thing. Enjoy the hoops. Well, at least you don't even have Iowa, South Carolina, too. Like, watch UConn and, and Purdue on Monday. That might be a more entertaining game than anything you've watched from the Cavs in the last six weeks. Or watch another NBA team that, that works normally. Talk to you later this week. Last week, the regular season's here. Have a great Monday.